Do you have what it takes to be a fighting maroon? Since 1908 to the present, we've been fighting the good fight by land, sea, and air. Are you a teenage superhero when it comes to research, scholarship, and service to others? We are into producing superheroes. Superheroes in the arts and sciences. Becoming a teenage superhero is like embarking on a journey of a thousand kilometers which begins with the first step. And that first step is like going on an adventure, an adventure towards self-discovery. You've got to want it bad enough too. Ah, our young apprentice, sharing our vision you must. Dude, you've got to live, lead, and give. And it doesn't matter if people call you a nerd, a geek, or a boy or girl genius. It doesn't matter if you don't belong to an honor section for you to pass our entrance exam either. If you have the heart for being of service to others, possess the desire to make a difference in this world, or you simply want the kind of education that is cutting edge, then you're well on your journey to becoming a superhero, just like some of these guys. I started scuba diving when I was 18, and then I think it started from my love and amazement of coral reefs in general, and then I wanted to pursue a career that involved coral reefs just out of my uh, enjoyment from scuba diving, I think, when I was younger. Well, um, of all the subjects I took in high school, perhaps math is the only one that gave me a certain accuracy, a certain certainty that once you get the answer, you know that it's the only answer. And your teacher won't say, ah, oh, this is not the answer, I think this is. But in math, it's not that. So it, there is only one answer. At that time uh, that I entered college, um, I took a variety of subjects. And I found that I actually liked and excelled in math. So at the time I had two choices, either BS Math or BS Physics. But Physics had, aside from the math part, it also had more physical ap uh, applications. More, um, yeah, essentially you can see Physics more than you can see math. So that's why I decided to go to um, Physics. A, a lot of people hate chemistry. And uh, when I was in high school, I'm one of them. But uh, things have changed. Right now, uh, I'm doing chemistry every day. I'm teaching chemistry. I'm doing research in chemistry and I think I'll be doing chemistry for the rest of my life. And uh, I find it very interesting because if you come to think of it, ev everything here, uh, if you, whatever you see, whatever you hear, whatever you feel, whatever you taste, it involves chemistry. And the fields such as medicine, biology, geology, and, and all other fields also involve chemistry. Pfizer is stands for versatile uh, instrumentation system for science, education, and research. Okay, that's why it's Pfizer. So it, it, it's a mouthful. But what it really is, is we're trying to develop a low cost system, universal system, with the goal of introducing modern scientific equipment in all schools in the Philippines. It's on in all secondary schools in the Philippines. So that's a grand almost <laughs> that's a grand vision. It will be all. Okay, so the title of this experiment is simple harmonic motion. And the main um, purpose of the experiment is to test the effects of the harmonic motion on the By land we conquer with innovations in agriculture, ecotourism, reforestation and conservation of our natural resources. Ecotourism is travel to natural areas for the purpose of studying nature and feeling uh, recreated or experiencing leisure in a natural place. And uh, lately, uh, ecotourism is also uh, regarded as a for conservation. In the last 32 years, the Institute has developed a lot of uh, biotechnologies and products that are presently being used. And some of those are uh, biofertilizers like BioM, which are very useful as a biofertilizer for rice and corn, and already widely adapted uh, all over the Philippines. 
and uh, has been proven to effectively replace the all uh, up to 50 percent of uh, nitrogen requirement of plants. Well, basically, what I create is an interplay of the sciences and the arts and the integration of these two domains. I am very interested in the um, interplay of how we can fuse the arts to, through the sciences. We produce superheroes whose researches have advanced genome studies that help bring about better yielding crops in agriculture and animal husbandry and helping prevent diseases among Filipinos. The Philippine Genome Center is a center of excellence in gene discovery and genomics research that effectively translates knowledge into applications beneficial to Philippine society. This is how we live, by fulfilling our mandate of service to the nation. Uh, this is the first time that the University of the Philippines, as a system, is getting involved in disaster management. Republica 9500, which is the charter of UP, mandates that UP is a public service university that should provide assistance to government, to local governments, to communities, to city health. Number two, because UP has the expertise to assist local governments in times of disaster. And number three, we have alumni all over the place who can support and has the capability to provide immediate assistance. By sea, our superheroes' researchers have helped bring about breakthroughs in finding a cure for cancer and other fantastic finds right smack in our very own territorial waters. Pharmacies, we call it, and we have two of the best research centers in the country to prove it. One in Bolinao and our College of Fisheries and Ocean Studies in Iloilo. We decided to try to find out what in the cone snails and on kills people. So we started uh, talking to fishermen and going to the provinces, uh, particularly Cebu, Camiguin, where uh, there have been reports of uh, human fatalities from Conus Venom, particularly Conus Geographers. So that started us on this research. What happens, the reason this can kill people is the key elements are there's the uh, calcium uh, ion channel, then the acetylcholine receptor, and the uh, sodium channels. And the cone snail can block all three of these important components of the neuromuscular junction. Uh, so these are now used for people with terminal cancer who no longer respond to morphine, and some people who had neuropathic uh, syndromes that they don't know what the cause of the pain is. We not only focus on biodiversity, we help protect our aquatic resources to brood. By air, we conquer with degrees that you can earn while being in the confines of your home or office through the UP Open University, as well as degrees in mass communication, engineering, and would you believe, physics. Studying at UPOU means differently for different people. To many of you, it means upgrading your knowledge and skills without leaving the security of your job. For others, it means acquiring expertise in emerging fields of study, and to some of you, it is that much needed second chance in life. We at the UPOU have committed ourselves to providing quality education for Filipinos both here and abroad. Being part of this learning community means interacting with students from all over the country and the world. The Faculty of Education of the University of the Philippines Open University is doing an OSAID funded study uh, on the use of digital tablets for teaching and learning in Philippine public secondary schools. The study involves the deployment of 1,000 digital tablets to be used in year one science, mathematics, and English classrooms in 10 uh, selected uh, public secondary schools. Uh, the 
aim of the study is to identify teaching strategies for the effective use of digital tablets for learning in these subject areas and to identify the factors that impact on the effectiveness and sustainability of using digital tablets for learning. The idea was to determine if and whether the use of communication technologies in basic education would be impactful upon learning. The molecular beam epitaxy is a technique to grow or to deposit thin films through the interaction of molecular beams on a heated substrate. The microchips found in your computers, they have awesome beginnings. First, they have to be grown using the molecular beam epitaxy or any epitaxial technique. That's the first stage. You have to grow a crystalline layer or the semiconductor layer. And later on, those films will be processed, maybe device fabrication or characterization and the finished product is an optoelectronic device. Because of our commitment to national development and social responsibility, we are endowed with cutting-edge technology and just the right kind of committed scientists that allow us to give back the vital knowledge to the country and the people we serve. This is how we lead in areas where it counts the most. It stands for Nuclear Magnetic Resonance. So basically, um, what it does is it uses uh, electromagnetic fields able to change the electromagnetic um, orientation of the atoms in, in your sample so that you can get an, a picture of what its molecular structure looks like. For my field, for example, I study sponges. Many sponges produce compounds that haven't even been discovered. So in order for me to write a publication about this compound, I have to know what its structure is. And so for this situation, the NMR is a very valuable tool because it will allow me to know the structure of my compound. There aren't too many machines like this in the world. so. It will make a huge impact in science because this is a huge piece of equipment and usually big discoveries require big machines. Right now we're in the femtosecond laser facility of the National Institute of Physics. Uh, we have here a, a femtosecond laser which is a laser that can turn on and off at very fast speed. Mm -hmm. If you would like to know how fast that is, it's uh, 1 over 10 trillion of a second and uh, that's a very very short time and we use it for our experiments in trying to look at how um, materials react to very very short events. I, I, I never saw myself staying out of the country for a long time. I wanted to go back and uh, share what I learned and uh, at the same time, um, encourage more students, younger generations, to take up science-related courses. Professor Neil Bascos was once a teenage superhero. Now, he teaches at the Institute of Microbiology and his research on a way to trace the development and spread of cancer cells may just spell the difference in helping find a cure for this dreaded disease. How cool is that? In the field of the social sciences, the Archaeology Studies program has uncovered material evidence that dates the existence of man in the Philippines to as far back as 20,000 years ago, which makes Filipino civilization older than the pyramids of Egypt. Our social scientists have been committed to preserving our tangible and intangible culture. Can you beat that? Our tangible and intangible culture may also be preserved in books and fascinating researches on oral tradition and our diverse regional languages, as well as in cooperative efforts to provide housing for the poor. From Baguio to Mindanao, we rock! Aside from teaching, I did also a lot of, um, of uh, research in the field especially in among the Panay Bukidnon, the epics, studying the epics of Panay, documenting them, 
translating them, making articles out of them, making analysis, especially uh, how important are these ethics in relation to uh, the way they reflect pre-Hispanic culture. No? The Community Development Program of the College of Arts and Sciences of Beauty Visayas uh, has established a partnership with the Homeless People's Federation of the Philippines Incorporated for the last five years. So uh, the, our program is uh, uh, providing uh, field uh, technical assistance to this NGO through our community development field work classes. I spent about 14 months of field work in the highly fiscal unit to study the food. People would explain the excruciating pain when people were the food, but this was abstract for me. By the end of this work, it was time for me to get the tool to understand the pain that our early ancestors had when they were the food at a young age. The tool functioned as a painful rite of passage, as body ornaments, as talismans from malevolent forces, marks of bravery, a visible marker of religious and political affiliations in the community. <laughs> And as our friends in the Visayas and Mindanao would say, Padayon UP! Onward to being of service to the nation. Padayon towards national development through research and education. Padayon UP! In paving the way in making a globally competitive Philippines. Did you know that two of the country's most famous artists in the visual arts were once teenage superheroes? Fernando Amorzola for painting and Guillermo Tolentino for sculpture. In the field of the art, check out our poets, award-winning writers, sculptors, painters, and... Okay, so we also have a couple of performing artists. We have some of those too, and they're industry leaders in theater, dance, music, and television. And if you ever wondered who thought of these immensely successful, popular market brands, Wonder no more that they were conceptualized, owned, and operated by our alumni. Do you have what it takes to be a doctor, a cutting-edge dentist, surgeon, nurse, or biochemist? Dr. Maria Corazon de Lombria is one of the Philippines' top forensic experts specializing in DNA analysis. We are the country's leading institution in the field of medicine and medical research. This is how we give. We pay it forward. Ang ang newborn screening ay isang paraan kung saan ay maari natin maiwasan ang isang uh, dahilan na pwedeng maging sanhin ng mental retardation. Meron po dito ng dalawang bata si Janela sa JR at makikita natin na si JR ay retarded, hindi siya na-screen at si Janelle ay normal dahil siya ay nagawa ng newborn screening. Ito po ay napakasimple. Kukuha po tayo ng ilang patak ng dugo sa, sa sakong na isang bata, ilalagay sa isang papel, at ito'y papadala sa laboratorio at sa uh, gagawin. At kung positibo, ay gagamutin po kagad ang bata. Napakadami po ng benefits natin sa newborn screening dahil sa makikita po natin dito sa limang kondisyon na ginagawan po ng newborn screening, pag hindi po naagapan ng bata, ay napakamahal po ng pag-aalaga ng isang bata. Are you focused in all your endeavors? Do you have the patience, the drive, and the dedication for superhero scholarship in geology, marine science, physics, microbiology, engineering, law, and the arts, and other highly specialized fields? Remember that gas leak in that big condo building in Makati? Where the threat of an entire city block being blown to smithereens gripped Makati City in fear? Guess what? It was one of our scientists that traced the leak and saved Makati City from being blown sky high. We did a scientific method when we went there. Uh, illuminate the possible from the, impo the impossible from the possible. That's how science works. You start with the impossible and then you narrow it down. You narrow it down. And then 
when no one was telling the truth, we did then our own probing. We developed here some uh, drill, uh, drilling machines, lightweight. We started drilling, and we finally pinpointed it was the pipeline that had a leak. But it was, uh, it was not me who only found it. It was a team. A lot of it from UP. I had a hydrogeologist. I had an environmental engineer. So it was teamwork and very, very hard-nosed science. In an age of global warming and serious climate changes, we need every able-bodied scientist and would-be scientists like you to become geologists, volcanologists, and mining engineers. This way, we wouldn't have to depend on other countries for oil. We will have the ability to seek out alternative sources of energy. Project NOAA, or the NOAA there stands for Nationwide Operational Assessment of Hazards. And, um, we're actually using advanced science and technology to address our huge problem with natural events, natural hazard events. Um, with Project NOAA, we give real-time information. We want to empower people. We see disasters as a developmental issue, not just a product of uh, one-time extreme events. It's a developmental issue because we want to uh, locate ourselves in places that are not compromised and with the tools that we have to find out where the hazardous places are like for floods like for lahar floods as well uh, uh, earthquakes tsunamis etc we must have a map and we must go to the field and we must simulate we must do experiments and all of those tools uh, we apply to be able to produce high-resolution flood hazard maps that can be disseminated to the communities. Because without those hazard maps that are high in resolution, people won't be able to prepare and people won't be able to plan. In our research group, uh, we are doing uh, analysis on disinfection by products. So after water treatment, these products are being formed. Uh, we're also into analysis of pharmaceuticals in water as well as uh, flame retardants and, and a lot more. And I chose chemistry because I think uh, if I'll be working in chemistry, if I'll be doing chemistry every day, I think I can better contribute to society. I think that chemical engineering um, is uh, more than just having a job after you pursue that career. It's more on solving the problem of our nation. We're calling on superheroes like you to join us in the fight in the noble quest for a better tomorrow. And because every superhero's journey needs a strong mentor to prepare them for the adventures that lie ahead, we have some of the best mentors in the planet. In the Philippines, there is only one national university with a global resonance. We are the university that shapes minds that shape the nation. And we walk our talk too. Give me an I. Give me an N. Give me an internationalization. We are one of the few universities in the Philippines affiliated with some of the top universities all over the world. Should you want to pursue one of our twinning programs, you can earn two degrees locally as well as internationally through exchange scholarships and the UP Open University programs. Today, I join all of you as we collectively embark on a journey towards making the University of the Philippines a great university in the 21st century. We are a university with a formidable history and a tradition of honor and excellence, core values that give us our superpowers, plus the added expertise of a solid faculty to back us up. We have the broadest range of facilities and the farthest reach in terms of our campuses and constituent units. From as far north as Baguio to as far south as Mindanao, we make our presence felt. Our graduates range from Presidents of the Republic to the Secretary General of the United Nations, from national artists and national scientists to box office and beauty queens. Yes, we have those too. Only one university has shaped and molded them to becoming the best in the country and even the rest of the world. I spent five years of college here and just molded me in many ways, in both in, in my um, academic performance, of course, 
um, and study habits and discipline. I became a lot more street smart and more technologically adapt. If you want to enter in UP, make sure that you want because you want to learn. I think one of the best things that happened to my life is being uh, uh, being given the chance to teach here in UP, especially in the Institute of Chemistry, because uh, teaching in front of the bright minds of the country is, is a privilege. We are one UP, be it in Diliman or Padre Paura, Los Baños or Baguio, be it in Iloilo, Tacloban, Cebu or Mindanao, or the UP Open University. There is only one, University of the Philippines. So, if you have what it takes to be a superhero like these maverick scientists and artists, then maybe you should be an escook or an esca, an oblet or an oblet. In short, a full-blooded maroon. Not just a teenage superhero, but a scholar of the people in the one and only University of the Philippines.